Yes, right back. Live. So we're back here live in the studio at the WLCN, the program's viewpoint. Uh, we have with us, uh, Joe, I can't remember how to pronounce, pronounce your name. It's uh, Santillo. And, okay. <laughs> it's Spoiler. Italian. Yeah, all right. Uh, glad to have you with us as a guest here this morning. We've been talking about primarily uh, head injuries uh, in uh, contact sports. Uh, there are other bodily injuries that happen frequently. Uh, you happen to work with us at Lincoln College with our athletes on the court. Um, uh, let's take basketball, for instance. Um, what are the most prevalent injuries in the, in the uh, sport of basketball? Um, I would say ankle sprains. It's usually the, the, probably the, the first um, injury that comes to mind when working with basketball players. Um, but believe it or not, I really for like men's basketball and it's not so much mental toughness i really don't get a lot of men's basketball injuries um, interesting i usually if i do it's usually uh, ankle injuries or mm -hmm. an acute like out of a nowhere. sudden trauma a yeah. sudden trauma injury exactly. as opposed to, yes and and even with, for some reason with uh men's basketball i i don't get a lot of them well mm -hmm. now why do you keep saying men's basketball what about women's basketball well because women's basketball um they're it, more vicious they, <laughs> oh, they, they uh, I mean, I, I would say ankle injuries would probably be, probably be again the first first injury that comes to mind, and then um, women's uh, women's sports. I've noticed that uh, there's a higher uh, a higher incident of of overuse injuries like tendonitis, like patellar tendonitis. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a certain overuse injury called patellofemoral syndrome, which involves the kneecap. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also female athletes are more prone to uh, non-contact ACL tears. Um, when I was in college, there was uh, a, a lot of buzz and research around non-contact ACL tears in female athletes like basketball players and soccer players. Mm -hmm. And for a long time it was, well, is it, is it hormone related? Is it muscle imbalance? Is mm -hmm. it biomechanics? Is it the, the intercontinental notch where the ACL sits in the knee? And they're asking these questions, well, is it, is it this, or is it that, or is it this? Come to find out, it's all of it. It's not just one, it's all of it. So there's multiple factors that play into these non-contact ACL tears. Mm -hmm. And so over the past couple of years, I've, I've had, uh, this year I was fortunate, but over the past two or three years, I've had one um, non-contact ACL tear when the young lady was just running down the court and just stopped and turned or pivoted or she tried to go up for a layup and that's when it happened. Mm -hmm. There was nobody around, no one hit it, no one, there was no contact, it was just, it was what it was, it was just this young lady running and something happened. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, a, it, a, it was and still is a big deal amongst female athletes because of the fact that it is, um, the ACL reconstructive surgery is extensive, the recovery is long and so if you're as uh, an athlete trainer trying to prevent these injuries, I mean, there was a lot of research in trying to figure out how can we do this. I mean, I, obviously, my job is to keep these kids playing, but I can't do that if they're dropping like flies from these injuries. Um, and about six years ago, um, Memorial brought on a program called Sports Metrics, and it's it was one of the first um, programs used to help combat the um, this rash of injuries amongst female athletes when it comes to non-contact ACL tears. We can't, you know, obviously we can't change um, anatomy. We can't change, we can't no. change that. It be what it be. Exactly. <laughs> we can't change physiology. You know, we can't do anything mm -hmm. about the hormones. But what we can do is that we can affect the muscle imbalances. We can affect the biomechanics, in other words, how they jump and land. And so that's what this program does, the sports metrics. It, it addresses those two things. In other words, trying to correct how they jump and land and try to increase their, um, their muscle strength. In other words, the muscle imbalance between the muscles in the front of the leg and the muscles in the back of the leg. And by doing that, it's actually um, the rate of eight, nine contact ACL tears, especially for those who go through this program, it goes down dramatically. And so the success of this program is obviously it's pretty big because now we have athletes that could have or should have torn their ACLs that are now playing pain-free. It's interesting how those things can happen. I remember very vividly, I can see it in my mind's eye right now, uh, one of Lincoln High School's best athletes ever, and a great kid, Brad Bushel, 
was running downfield. I think he was on the way to the end zone, as I remember. And all of a sudden, he's down sidelines, and he just collapsed. He had torn something, ACLU or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really never, he went on to play football at the University of Missouri. Uh, I used to tell his dad, get down on his knees, and his, I said, Jack, I don't know what a novena is, but you ought to make one every night, because <laughs> he had one boy, full ride, Tim's brother Tim was a great kid and a great athlete, full ride basketball at, at uh, Champaign, and Brad was full ride football down at the <laughs> University of Missouri. But that injury, uh, kind of really put a damper on his athletic career from the from that point on, yeah. and those things can happen so fast. It, everything was going fine, then all of a sudden, just down he went. Yeah, and a lot of it, um, you don't see as many of those in like the male sports. Um, a lot of that has to do with like, uh, anatomy, um, as well as physiology, like uh, the hormones. Obviously, that we we men don't have the same hormone fluctuations as women do. So we don't necessarily, uh, I should say, have to worry about that too much, but we don't have the same uh, underlying precursors as to the, what can cause a non-contact ACL tears. Um, but in, there was a, there's actually a huge emphasis in um, per, like preseason now, uh, preventative stuff now. I mean, I know there are <coughs> different, like, Excuse since, you know, we're centrally located between, you know, these large communities like Peoria, Bloomington, mm -hmm. Decatur, Springfield, that, and then Champaign-Urbana, they offer programs, like, for athletes to help get them in shape ready for the fall season and mm -hmm. sometimes winter and spring season. Um, we have a scaled-down version of that at the hospital called Power Plus. It's a program designed to help get these kids ready for their, their their sports seasons you know best prevention is uh, you know, yeah best prevention is conditioning and mm -hmm. if the, yes. those individuals are not ready for their sports season then the chances of injury go up dramatically and i see it even at the college um when it's fall starts at the college there's it's usually the first like two three weeks it's just mainly fall sports mm -hmm. and then the beginning of september <clears throat> all heck break loose and every sport and activity on campus is now doing preseason or something and what i find is is that um those sports that athletes that don't do anything this summer like say i i, mm -hmm. I noticed some like maybe some winter sports i may get some and then sometimes in the spring if they don't do any kind of conditioning those are the ones more susceptible to muscle strains as well as overuse injuries. You know, something we haven't mentioned, Judith Kay, is uh, Joe's affiliation with, uh, with, with our own hospital, Mayor Abraham Lincoln Memorial. Uh, and you're out there on a daily basis seeing, right. seeing patients, uh, preventative as well as, as treating. Mm -hmm. uh, um, tell me about your, your schedule out there. and, and who would be uh, availing themselves of, of your professional uh, at the expertise? Hospital or college? At the college. At, at the, the college. Mm -hmm. um, I am there from 1 to 5.30 on a daily basis. Uh -huh. um, I also cover all home events as well. So, like yesterday, we had two baseball games. Mm -hmm. and so I was there to help cover those. Mm -hmm. um, I'm there specifically for athletes. Um, prior to me going to the college, um, there are there was a concern uh, amongst the, the athletic director and some of the coaches was some of the, the non-scholarship athletes, some of like intramural kids mm -hmm. or someone who maybe gets injured, maybe playing a pickup game. Mm -hmm. Those were individuals who were coming in seeking you know the help of the athletic trainer at the time. But the problem was is that they were interfering with the athletes who are there on scholarship and they're, who are in season. And so before I got there, that was a concern that they need to address, and I said that that's I'm fine with that. As long you know, if you're fine with it as well, that I will only see and treat Lincoln mm -hmm. College athletes. And so, when they come in, um, I'm there from starting to get a starting at one. Um, and so, if they have a question or concern, I can evaluate their injury, and depending on their evaluation, um, I set up a uh, a treatment uh, schedule for them, as well as a rehabilitation schedule for them to try to either help prevent the injury or either try to reduce or eliminate their uh, their injury altogether so that they can participate and continue to participate pain-free in their sport. Now, at, at the hospital, um, you see patients from 
all around the area from various uh, various schools. Uh, and you you're out there on a daily basis uh, in the mornings, and, and give us the scope of, of of your professional activity there, Joe. At the at the hospital. Uh-huh. Um, yes. Currently, because of my schedule with the college, um, essentially my schedule is with the college right now. Um, mm -hmm. Because of the the high demand and volumes that I see, as well as the the hours, which could vary from mm -hmm. day to day to day. Um, I don't spend a lot of time at the hospital, mm -hmm. but once the school kind of settles down and the, the athletes go home for the summer, I spend quite a bit of time at the at the call, at, excuse me at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And people go in there for for rehab mm -hmm. services. In a, in our great, you know, we've got a great uh, mm -hmm. therapy department there, yeah. physical therapy. And do your patients uh, come in under your jurisdiction and, and your treatment to to do rehabbing work? It uh, it, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, insurance dictates everything. Oh, and yes. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Unfortunately. And since insurance dictates, dictates well, who I can and cannot see, that will vary. And so um, I don't necessarily treat a lot of uh, patients during the summer months because mm -hmm. of, sure. again, insurance. Uh -huh. There are some times where I may, um, they may step in and help uh, treat a patient. But uh, usually during the summer months, I work with uh, kids with the sports metrics or the Power Plus, mm -hmm. and we usually have a nice number of kids during the summer months between myself and my coworker Missy. They About this conditioning that you mm -hmm. were discussing, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> you know, people have been saying now for a few months that, boy, I sure wish it would warm up. Well, let me say this about that. It will. <laughs> we are in central Illinois, and you can bank on the, the fact the that day. it will warm up. Now, I always think these poor kids out there practicing mm -hmm. for football, <clears throat> for instance, yes. and playing baseball, I think, holy Friday, that's got to be tough. How do, is there any correlation between injuries and even the awful times that we hear of a death? Some kid out there working out and just ups and dies and come to find out they've got a bad heart problem that nobody ever detected yeah it's actually uh, when it comes to um, heat related Ill injuries and illnesses um, right now especially you know yesterday and today when it's gonna be in the 80s and we're I mean our bodies have not acclimated to the change yet mm -hmm. and it takes about two weeks and so when these athletes especially the baseball players you know it's like yesterday I mean they they were you know, having a tough time, not necessarily playing, but just, just trying to deal with the heat. And so we, they were drinking tons and tons of water, and that's what they needed to do. Plus, in between innings, if, um, if they weren't at bat, their dugout is in the shade, and so it was much cooler there. Mm -hmm. But in the fall, it's, there's, um, since, you know, we don't have football at the college, you know, I, I, have, I have to work with uh, the, right. the soccer teams. But by the fall, most of the kids are, are in some, a lot of them are used to the heat by that time. And so, we're, I mean, that doesn't mean that they're still not susceptible to heat-related uh, injuries and illnesses. Uh, but they're less likely than those in, in the spring because their bodies are have acclimated mm -hmm. to it. Um, in regards to the, um, the uh, you know, these kids who may drop from a heart condition unknown, um, that's, you know, that's why there's physicals. Um, there was uh, a few years ago, we had an athlete, uh, Kyle Turpin. He yeah. ended up, you know, he came to me with a concern about, you know, he would feel dizzy after he'd stand mm -hmm. up. And, you know, I was like, oh, boy. You know, individuals like himself who are susceptible to enlarged hearts, I was uh, immediately, you know, talking with him and the nurse as well as his coach, decided that he needs to follow up with his primary care doctor immediately because we don't want or didn't want him to go up and down the court and have that happen to him right. so he was sent to his family doctor and his family doctor then referred him to a cardiologist and he was tested and fortunately um, there was nothing wrong with his heart it was just because he's a good sized kid he you know he had to be a little bit more careful about getting up from a chair and standing up just because it hmm. just took a little bit longer for blood to travel up and down than for you or I and so, fortunately for him, he was he was. He was, he was How do you do down in Florida? Did you have a pretty good year down there? I don't. I, he got away, and I kind of 
lost yeah. track of what he did down there. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I know, you know, I know he, was, he was playing more this year, but obviously because last year he was he was redshirted. Yeah. But uh, his <laughs> the big thing with Kyle was always his weight. He was seven feet, but yeah. he was maybe two hundred and fifteen pounds. But when he was playing down there, he got out to about two hundred and fifty. Mm-hmm. And so, at when in, I believe at one point he was, um, I think Coach uh, Coach Whiteman was telling me that, or maybe it was one of the assist, former assistants mm-hmm. or assistants, he got up to about 200, uh, 260, maybe 270. And so he uh, hopefully had a better season than he did last year and was uh, good successful. Kid. Joe, what's the most prevalent injury you see? Out at the college? Mm-hmm. Or in your practice at the hospital or whatever. Uh, I see a lot of uh, low backs and low backs and hips. I see a ton of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it was about three or four years ago when I started to spend a lot more time investigating um, athletes that would come in with low back and hip problems. Hmm. Before, I would just say, oh, it was maybe a muscle strain or, hey, it was maybe just this. But now I spend a little bit more time talking with them, investigating, and just, and just decir- deciphering if what it could be. Mm-hmm. You know, in, instead of just saying, you know, it's just a muscle strain. And that's probably just because of the fact it's just, you know, more years of experience, whereas before I wasn't really necessarily looking for that. Now I am. Are people's backs not as strong as they were a generation ago or something? Or how come there's so much back trouble? Back um, trouble. Because back you trouble. associate with old people, then that's what we have. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe that's it. <laughs> um, I would say um, a lot of it has to do with, again, comes down to conditioning. Um, athletes not conditioned enough, some that maybe just weren't properly conditioning. Um, a lot of times it could be just to do to something as um, turning a twisting rung and something, something simple like that, and it just it happens. And, um, yeah, but it, what it comes down to is... it. it Assessing them correctly, treating them properly, and then making sure that it doesn't happen again. Mm-hmm. Um, I get a lot of kids that have low back problems that, you know, that, that just, just then they come to see me, they just were nagging for years and just never got treated. Whether it just be that they don't see anybody for it or just don't say anything. And what about the knee business? Uh, now, you're lucky. You mm-hmm. said you played football for eight years. Yes. But... You don't have any knee trouble. Now, p- people, I guess, just kind of assume that somebody who would played football yeah. for eight years would have lousy knees. I was blessed with tree trunks. <coughs> I have big legs. And that, yeah, that, that he, helps. He's, he's a full-size boy. It, <laughs> it, it, it helps. Um, but I don't... A lot of times, especially with uh, with knee injuries, especially in football, are contact injuries. In other words, the athlete was planted and someone maybe fell and might have injured a ligament on the inside or outside of the knee. And I never, fortunately, I never had that. But um, it's very, like, uh, let's say, in the NFL or in, co- in the like, collegiate level, you see a lot of the offensive linemen wearing braces on their knees because it's pretty much have gotten standard because, well, you have those guys in the trenches and they're pushing and prodding and they're all basically falling on each other. Those braces are specifically designed to keep them from injuring the MCL, which is basically the inside the, the, one, the ligament that sits on the inside of the knee or the ligament that sits on the outside of the knee. And so you may get an occasional contact ACL tear, but, it's, but a lot of times it is the MCL or the LCL that you'll see injured. But if people train properly, mm-hmm. they can avoid all these kinds of things. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Uh-huh. Um, the contact injuries, you know, it, it all depends. You know, it, it, depend, it really does for the contact injuries. But for the non-contact injuries, like, uh, the, like uh, patellar tendonitis, mm-hmm. um, bursitis, things that are just overused, a lot of those can be prevented just by proper conditioning, having a proper conditioning and flexibility program. Um, the ACL injuries, the non-contact ACL injuries, those can be prevented by you know, doing a, um, like sports metrics or another, uh, another preventative program. How about for people who aren't 29 anymore and uh, ha- are having arthritis problems? Mm-hmm. Is, is there some uh, way that sports medicine could kind of matriculate into helping people who have uh, problems with arthritis through training conditioning type situations? I would say 
the the best program that you can do is exercise. Um, exercise is a wonderful way to help reduce the symptoms of arthritis. Um, doing aquatic-based or water-based programs will help reduce and uh, make uh, make the individual feel much better. And so and a lot of the things that we would do with, with athletes can be easily translated over to the aquatic-based mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But what it comes down to is staying active. Um, arthritis is one of those things where, believe it or not, does you know you will feel better if you're active. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, speaking of active, that clock has been very active for us, and it's rolled around. Joe, we appreciate very much your time with us this morning. Uh, You you know, you perform a very important job for the folks in the community out there, and that great physical therapy department we have out there at the hospital. We're lucky to have that. So we appreciate your presence. We always try to close the program with some sort of... I have a facetious saying about sports and sports medicine and so forth. Some colleges are really quite strict in awarding letters. They don't award them until the student can tell you which letter it is. Thank you for Viewpoint. (laughs) Oh, dear.